Well, it's that time of the week again. It's time for Chit Chat Across the Pond, and I'm joined yet again by Adam Angst of Tidbits. How are you doing today, Adam? I'm doing good, and my pond is right there. <laughs> there you go. It's important to always keep that in focus. Keep, well, keep your pond of... in, in focus, right? <laughs> Well, I've been out of town for uh, quite a number of weeks here in Africa, but uh, Adam hasn't rested one bit. And one of the articles that really uh, lit me up was when you were discussing a change that Apple has introduced in the Sequoia beta. And uh, it's raised quite a kerfuffle and you have many opinions, I believe, right? <laughs> I, I always have opinions. But yes, yes, this, this, one, this, these, this one I have opinions that I'm, I'm willing to share because I think Apple is entirely just wrong. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes there's room for debate. Not this one. Uh, yeah. Not, no, I don't, I don't think so. So, okay. Let's start at the beginning. So um, we start seeing betas of Sequoia. Uh, I'm actually running the beta 15.1 so I can technically play with the Apple intelligence features, although that would imply I have free time to play with all these features. Um, so, uh, but all of a sudden I started getting a permission dialogue from CleanShot X, which is the app I use for screenshots. Uh -huh. And and it, it said, do you want to, do you, uh, for, it pops up, you know, I, I install Sequoia beta and says, oh, do you wish to continue to, to allow permissions to record the screen? I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's a reasonable question to ask after you've sure. done something major. I'm not offended by this. And I, so I say yes. And I don't think about it for a little while, but I must have restarted or done something because um, this is my, my MacBook Air, which I don't, it's not my primary Mac. So I'm using it every couple of days for something. And, um, and I get the, the dialogue again. I think, oh, huh. I, I already said yes. Um, why am I being asked again? Um, but then, like, like a good journalist, um, I, I, I tried to take a screenshot of it. <laughs> you, can, you can see where this goes, right? Because because when you try to take a screenshot of the screenshot app dialogue and you're already in a screenshot, you know, scenario, it wants to ask you again. So I got another dialogue and I couldn't click on any of them because the mouse was being captured by the like what you're doing in the screenshot. Right. So right. it took minutes before like the whole thing timed out and let me click the click the dialogue. And I was like, rrr, rrr, what's going on? I'm, I'm all upset. Um and so I finally, I started to figure out what was going on. And then actually Chance Miller at 9to5Mac did a good article that sort of said, oh, here's exactly what's going on. Like, ah, excellent. He's figured it out. And it turns out that Apple has decided in its infinite uh, loop wisdom um, <laughs> that uh, um, we should be reprompted for at least screen recording permissions every week. Or if you restart your Mac, or if you log in and lo log out and log back in, for like, every app that for every app that does ev screenshots, for every app that does screenshots or requests screen recording permissions. See, now this is one of those interesting ones where we Hoi Puloi users think of screen recording as screen recording, right? You know, like right. you're recording stuff on the screen, like the screen screenshots or something. Screen videos, just screen flow, screen float, you know, um, you know, anything, even QuickTime quick player, you're recording screen, whatever. Sure, no problem. However, from the developer perspective, you might want to use um, the APIs that do screen recording to understand what's on the screen so that you can act on it in different ways. So it turns out there's a whole bunch of apps that requ request these permissions because they're doing something else that 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 requires this identifying on-screen elements or or doing something that that involves this context of the screen. So things like Photoshop, Premiere, Default Folder 10, Display Link, Google Chrome, Ice, Keyboard Maestro, Slack, uh, Text Snipers, and Zoom. All of these kinds of things are going to ask for these permissions. So yes, so the way, I, I pretty it, the way much it is, have all of those installed precisely. <laughs> um, and there's plenty more too. I mean, those are that's just like a hey, you're going to probably have a couple of these. You know, plus any screenshot apps you might use. Um, Does the built-in screenshot app do it too? No, of course not. Oh, okay. I mean, come on, you give that. That's assumed to have permission. Yeah, possibly um, be nefarious. Yeah, right. So, so the, uh, 
Um, so, so basically, yes, you could be in a situation where you were getting a dialogue from each of these apps once a week or every time you restarted your Mac. Um, which, I mean, let me tell you, when I'm testing something, I will often restart my Mac, you know, multiple times a day uh, right, because I want right. a, you know, a clean setup or something. And to have to, believe me, to have to re- deal with that dialogue every time you want to take a screenshot after restarting your Mac, really, really annoying. <laughs> so, uh, hey, do you have any idea what problem they were trying to solve? So the closest I can think, it's, it's, it's an interesting question. Um, I mean, it's, it's obviously security related, right? That you have given permission. So it's, it's an interesting problem because this, this is not going to solve some bad app is recording your screen, right? Because we've already solved that with the it will be, it, it will ask. So right? you can say no the first time. You could say no the first time. This okay. is saying that you've already said yes. Actually, no, we want you to keep saying that. yes. Adam, it's even more than that. You have to actively turn on the toggle to allow it to, to screen record. It's not even saying, it's not a yes dialogue, right? You have to go into screen recording yeah. permissions oh, and oh, turn yeah, it yeah. on. Precisely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you have this to take is, positive so, action. Positive action. So this is, this is a situation where Apple seemingly believes that you will have changed your mind about allowing an app to do this. In a week. Um, in a week, right. Um, or a restart, right? <laughs> like, I mean, holy cats, it's like just, just being ridiculous. So I was okay before this restart, but now I'm not so sure. Yeah, you know, and 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 so I, I shouldn't, I, I, I'm pushing a little too hard on the restart and the login of the week, because in fact, after this blows up from my article and Jason Snell and Grant Gruber and a ton of, ton of people wrote about it, um, as well as 9to5Mac and whatnot. It hits everywhere. The next beta of Sequoia um, drops it to a month <laughs> and takes out the restart login thing. Okay. Um, so it's not nearly as bad as it, as 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 I was talking to, to I was telling talking to Glenn Fleischman about it. So it's 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 um, it's four times better than it was <laughs> and twelve times worse than it needs to be. Per year. Yeah, it's like, I, I'm not going to hit you in the face with this hammer every day. Every <laughs> right. week. I'm only going to do it once a month, but I'm going to do it for every single application you have that might ever think it needs to know something about the screen. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so, uh, so, 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 okay. So we're, we're, it's gotten better, right? It has gotten better in the sense of like, it's only once a month. Um, it's but, wrong less often. It's rolling less often, right? Um, and it gets better than that even. Apple also um, <coughs> changed the prompt text. So it now says, app name, for instance, is requesting to bypass the system private window picker and directly access your screen and audio. This will what? allow app name to record your screen and system audio, including personal or sensitive information that may be visible or audible. Wait, what is system <laughs> private window picker? <laughs> <laughs> by words precisely and again we do this kind of stuff we're good right at this. we know this stuff I don't <laughs> honestly know we means. are we're good at this <laughs> <laughs> so um someone someone finally did explain to me um uh in Tibbet's talk that where apple was going with this um and the reason for that language which is still horrible Horrible, horrible, horrible is, you know how in Zoom, when you click share screen, mm-hmm. you get to pick which window you're, you're right. sharing? Right, or entire screen. Yeah. Right. So apparently, um, Apple provides uh, an API to give you that that window picker. Okay. And... If you bypass, if you are, if, if Zoom or WebEx or whatever has their own interface, that's what bypassing the system private window picker means. Now, what this means for screenshot utilities, default folder 10, Photoshop, Premiere, Bartender, who knows? I mean, like, like, it just makes no sense whatsoever. I'm pretty sure my brother-in-law would understand this immediately. I mean, I wouldn't have to explain it to him. Jeez. So I, yeah. You know what this reminds me a little bit of? Whenever I get a, an update to the Tesla, they talk about how many lines of C code they've they've changed. It's like even I don't care about that. You know, it it is all nerd talk. 
in the thing. It's not like this is going to make you hit fewer trash cans, which would be right. good information to have, right? It, but oh my god, we took out the grand theft auto mode. You know, like okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, especially, I mean, I slight sidetrack, but you you're aware of the obfuscated C contests? No. So I don't. They must still go on. I don't know. Basically, the the goal is to write an app that does something in the fewest line slash characters possible. Okay. Um, so talking about number of lines of code is kind of irrelevant because you could write tighter code too. I mean, come on now. Sure. I mean, why are you wasting all that space? And you're probably putting comments in there, aren't you? Yeah, you don't want to uh, do that. You don't want to have long yeah. variable names that explain what they are. <laughs> so, so any events, right? Lines of code, not important. Okay, um, so, the so private, yeah, so this system private window picker with the, with the change going to once a month, twelve times or four times less stupid. Does it still say system private window picker? As la, far, last I've heard, yes. Um, unfortunately, I have I've only gotten one. They haven't updated uh, fifteen point one as many times as they've updated fifteen point zero. Um, so hmm. I haven't been able to see see the uh, see those those uh, versions quite as well. Um, but my understanding is it hasn't changed from that at this point. Um, it's not clear if this is actually going to ship, right? Okay. You know, just be, just because something is in the beta and and that language is so horrible, it almost doesn't sound like it's planning to ship. Because that, I mean, even Apple really doesn't do that kind of stuff. Um, at, at the very most least, the if they thought they were talking to developers. Maybe if you squint, right. turn your head sideways, you could see why they would pick that language. But that yes. doesn't mean they yes. won't change the language and keep it for uh, you yes. know, twelve times stupider than it needs to. Entire, be. And entirely possible, twelve times stupider than it needs to be per year. Um, yes, on an annual basis. <laughs> on an annual basis, right? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Wait, like you know, there's annual percentage rate. This would be the what the annual annoyance rate. <laughs> right, right, right. Now, what's the effect on the general user or? The Adam angst of the world of having a pop up like this that's so constant. Well, what what is your human reaction to that? Um, <laughs> so, okay, 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 so, okay, okay, okay. So there's there's a guy named Jeff Atwood who um, he did Stack Overflow. He's an, he's a, a major major high heavy heavy develop, developer. Uh, he does Discourse now on the chat uh, forum software. Um, long ago, when this stuff first kind of started to hit in Windows Vista. I remember that. Yeah, Windows Vista. Um, he 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 had a, a he had a post decrying this kind of problem, and he said basically, all of these dialogues mash together into a giant "click here to get your work done" button. <laughs> because that's that's really what it comes down to. Right. It is the boy who cried wolf writ large in your Macintosh, because you don't. You don't know. You don't care. You just want this thing out of your face. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make you think. It makes you annoyed. Um, Has anybody written a keyboard uh, my maestro macro? <laughs> sorry, keyboard maestro. I'll get it yet. Keyboard maestro macro yet to click that dialogue as soon as it comes up. <laughs> Not that I know of, but it should be it's possible, doable, right? <laughs> Um, oh, but wait a minute. And, Would it have to have screen recording permissions to do so? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you'll do, probably get into that double, the double, triple dialogue where they just keep padding up. Do they all you, come at the same time? Like if I've got uh, keyboard maestro I, and I've got ice and I've got bartender, all these things, I've got screen float. Do they all come no, on at once? So you can go click, click, click. No, click? you have to actually do something that triggers it. Okay. So like clean shot doesn't, clean shot X doesn't, doesn't trigger it until you do a screenshot. Okay. Um, I am actively asking for a screenshot. Do you want to use, allow the system window picker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I would lose my ever loving mind. That, I mean, uh, it is, it is absolutely nuts. Talk about downgrading nuts. OSs. That's, that would make right. me do it. So, so back to like what Apple was thinking. Um, this is what I still don't get. Is like even on a monthly basis, you have installed an app. You have given the positive permission in you know, privacy and security, uh, screen recording permissions that, yes, I want to give this permission. You have used this app, presumably. Now, I my proposal, if Apple thinks this is like a, an actual concern, is that a random number of days afterwards, somewhere in the two to five, you after present this dialogue once. 
after installation. Okay. You 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 present this once. Because let's say you're 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 trying something and someone says, "Hey, check out this cool new app that lets, you know, lets you make funny faces and show them to all your friends." Um, and you install this and you'd use it use it once and you think, "Well, that's stupid." And then you get sidetracked and you forget that this thing has full screen recording permissions and is actually going to be showing your your stupid faces to your friends all the time um, until you shut it off. So I can understand one more prompt to say, hey, you know, are are you still using this? Are you aware this is still going? That's acceptable. You know, you really do get into that situation where you might have tried something once and then forgot. But something like Zoom or you know, Photoshop or Keyboard Maestro, which you have installed and you use regularly, it hasn't changed, for example, in that month. Why Why would you possibly want to ask, like, what could have changed for the user in that month that they would want now want to rescind the permissions, which in all likelihood are going to make the app not work? Right. Right, 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 Completely right. It's not, not like it. Re- it really isn't the oh, I don't trust it to do that, but I'll use it to do everything else. Yeah. Very few apps fall into that category. There are a few. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a few. <laughs> um, yeah, right. You're like I, I really didn't want to do screen recording for my screenshots because, well, I don't know. I'll paint them or something instead. But you know. does it do it for audio recording too? Um, I believe so, because um, it says uh, record your screen and system audio. So something like uh, Audio Hijack would trigger it. Could could easily. I, I don't think. know that one for sure, but yes. Okay. Um, anything that re- oh no, sorry, it's, QuickTime's it's, probably blessed. Yeah, undoubtedly. Um, it's pro- it's it's basically a particular permission. It's literally the screen recording permissions, and so um, which I suspect is kind of a bundle of various related things. Mm-hmm. Now there. Craig Hockenberry, um, well-known developer, um, said, hey, there's actually this entitlement. This sort of sounds related. Um, and um, it's, it's called the persistent content capture entitlement. Um, and so, so there was some thought that, hey, maybe this would work. But Apple, Apple only describes that as, quote, a Boolean value that indicates whether a virtual network computing, VNC app, needs persistent access to screen capture. So that does sort of sound like, you know, you're sharing screens in some way and, you know, you want to be able to not have to prompt on this regularly. Um, but again, that's much more in the Zoom, WebEx, Skype, whatever world, not the screenshot world, not the Photoshop, the default folder 10 utilities that are just looking at the screen and trying to do something. And Apple has said absolutely nothing about whether or not that entitlement would be appropriate, would be granted, you know, is available to be requested, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so that's the, the only, the only out we have right now. That people think might be allowed to do. Yeah, the only hope we have for it out right now. In a general sense, I feel like Apple has been getting progressively more naggy on doing uh, permissions. Oh, massively right? so. Massively so. So not not um, just my imagination. <laughs> no, 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 not not. It's, it's not even close. I mean, it's just it's just constant. Um, and and the and I actually, I mean, the problem is that this is. I don't think I think this is bad security. I mean, I, I, they're doing it for security reasons, obviously. Oh, yes, you might, you should know that this is going to happen. To an extent, that's useful. But a whole lot of it is just, again, mash the giant, get some work done button. You know, where like, I want to use this app. Of course, it's going to do X, Y, and Z because that's what its function is. Mm-hmm. And it's only interesting when you install, I don't know, you know, um, a utility that's supposed to, I don't know, you know, like, well, you know, Keyboard Maestro is a little bit funny that way because you don't, many people don't realize all the things it can do. You think, oh, it's just this little hotkey utility. But no, it can do so much more that it does need these screen recording permissions. Well, um, and, there, and there's apps where uh, one of my favorites was when I installed Ice to look at it as an alternative for Bartender, where I've, I've got a screenshot in front of me of the permissions thing, and it says screen recording. Ice needs your permission to apply custom styling to the menu bar. Ice does not record your screen. Grant permission <laughs> yeah. to screen recording. Yep. 
Yeah, precisely because because I mean again the 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 the, the from the developer standpoint, it's a very useful thing to be able to do. Um, do you understand what it is that it that it is doing that isn't screen recording, but Apple interprets as screen recording? It is it is using the screen recording APIs to identify on screen controls. So, like, hmm. your keyboard maestro has to know where to click. It okay. has to have a view of the screen. And sure, I understand with keyboard maestro, but in in the case of ice or bartender, is it because it needs to know that it's put the icons in the right place that you told it to put them? Prob- probably, yes. Um, okay. I, I don't, I don't, I don't use either of those offhand. So, um, so, so, but yeah, there, there's, it's. It's one of those things where developers actually come up with the the cleverest ways of doing things, right? I mean, <laughs> right. Apple presumably did not intend that API to be used for that purpose. Right. But, Which means they oh, should provide like, another API, and then they wouldn't be in right. that category. Right. You know, and, and, but, you know, but like, oh, if you need to do this funny thing, and keep in mind, that's the sort of stuff that is, you know, much more likely on the Mac, you know, vastly more likely on the Mac than the iPhone. You don't get to like look at the screen of the iPhone using your app um, and do something. Even if you want to, <laughs> even if you want to, it just ain't happening. So, uh, so yeah, so so, but this just there's this general like some some level of awareness of informing the user of something is good, and some level of permission is good. You know, like you know, because like if you just inform them that oh, Ice has permission to do this, you know, or Ice is Ice is Ice can do this. That's good, but you could argue that it, you know, that if you if you're just trying ice, you have no real idea what it does, and it and it and it asks for these kind of extreme permissions, including some things which you don't think are related at all. Um, you know, like oh, ice is asking for full access to your contacts and your photos. I think I was just going to use that example. Yeah. That's the one I wanted to come back and say. Do you really want it to have access to your contacts? No, I really don't. It right, doesn't need right, that. Right. I mean, so many that aspects seems, that's, of that. Yeah, and so you know, so that so so in those cases, it's it's useful. But this one feels um, like they they they've got this. You know, they they're seeing it purely as oh, video conferencing apps where you're sharing the screen. You know, you want to make sure they're not doing something bad, and and or, or people are. But again, you're. It's not really helping. It keeps <laughs> running into that. It's not really helping prevent doing something bad because if it's doing the right thing too zoom could be sending our video off to off to china for all we know um and we've given it permission because it's we're giving it permission to do what we expect it to do right so, right right so, so it it's not it's not going to solve that. it all it all it does is create a situation where every month you in theory have to go oh do i still want my screenshot utility to work you know the 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 because it, 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 it it's not going to stop the malware. I mean, the reason why I had that you know like random two to five days afterwards idea is imagine because there 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 you could imagine a bad app, a malware app. You know, so you have like a uh, you're in a domestic abuse situation where um, the 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 evil partner installs this video monitoring software on the Mac right. and, and, and accepts the permissions, sure. you know, and does, does the positive thing. And the other, the abusee is then being monitored and recorded. Mm-hmm. And so if you, without their knowledge in any way, shape or form. And so if you then prompt again, two to five days later, you've got a chance of getting it by the abuser. They wouldn't be able to, to uh, answer it positively again. You know, um, there's actually of- something for that already, though, is I've turned on Zoom so that we can see each other, and I see a little icon that shows that my my video is being recorded. Yes. If my yes. if my audio is being recorded, I see the audio <coughs> thing come up. If, yes. Uh, actually, does screen yep. recording? Yeah, and screen recording yes. does, too. Yep, it does. It's, right? Yeah, no, you get, you, you get, you get, so those, you get all there. that sort of stuff. <sighs> That's the best. That's the best I can come up with. Yeah, it's best I can best I can come up with. No, I mean, I mean, right. That's the whole like. So like, I'm looking. I have an iMac, so I'm looking at the little green recording light of the camera, Mm -hmm. and I have the little green light for by next to Control Center, um, showing me that. If we were just doing audio, camera icon. The video camera icon too. um, That's a third thing. 
Um, if it was audio, the orange, the, they would be orange next to control center and be an orange microphone icon. If it was just doing screen recording, it would be a purple icon. I don't know if there'd be something next to control center. Yeah, if I click Probably. on control center, I see the orange audio recording icon, but without clicking on control center, I don't see the orange icon. But I do That's see because the green screen I think screen recording subsumes audio. Well, it's not screen recording, it's video recording. Video subsumes recording, sorry, yeah, yeah. Video, yeah. sorry, yeah, yeah. Video recording subsumes audio. Yeah, okay. so video assumes audio, orange is audio only, and then purple is screen recording. Right. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like an enhancement to your idea. So I, li I like the idea of three to five days later. But I want it to do that for apps that I haven't actually launched. And I want it to have a second button that says, do you want to just delete the app too while we're here? Because, <laughs> that's because that's not, the, not a bad idea at all. <laughs> I'm the person who is going to download that thing that sends funny pictures to my friends. And a week later, I'm going to have forgotten that I did that because it was stupid. Yeah. Well, no, I'd probably love it. But uh, if it was stupid, <laughs> and then I'd like to be able to just go, yeah, hey, why did I give that permission? So something I haven't launched lately because maybe it'll yeah. set to auto launch or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I could. I mean, maybe not. maybe not a nag warning. But maybe a, you know, like an option where you could just, you know, you, get, you know, where basically like in system information or something like that, where you could where you can show you all your apps and it could just it could just say you haven't used these apps, you know, apps you haven't used in six months. Mm hmm. <laughs> delete, 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 delete. I'm like, like oh, OK, I would use that in a, in a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the main reason I do a clean install is because I'm too lazy to go through and look at and figure out when I haven't uh, launched anything. Was, and, so, and the iPhone needs that even more so. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> you know, though, I meet people who've never installed anything on their phones. <laughs> I, really? Yeah. Really? Nothing? Yeah, or like hardly anything. You know, maybe yeah. they put Snapchat on once five years ago and they haven't installed anything else. I mean, I... I like I said, well, you know, you're going to lose all your apps. I don't, I don't have any apps. What are you talking about? <laughs> then again, Steve's dad always tells me he hasn't installed any apps. And then I bring up his his app folder and I said, okay, it comes with, what is it? Is it 60 or 80 apps come pre-installed? And I said, but here's all, you have 120. You have installed <laughs> apps. No, I didn't. I never installed them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, well, uh, then we should talk now. <laughs> the only way to solve this is uh, apple.com slash feedback or through the developer channel, probably. So I, I'm suggesting people, if you have the beta, use the feedback assistant, file a mm -hmm. bug against it. Um, and if you're not using the beta, then the feedback page is the closest I can get. But there's nothing specific to that kind of uh, scenario. So what I'm recommending is, is use it for the Mac you plan to upgrade to Sequoia. You know, feedback on that, yeah. um, and 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 uh, you know, there was a little bit of a oh, Apple compromised by switching it to monthly. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's still bad, right? Yeah. You know, like this is I mean, like this was this was unnecessary. You don't you don't get compromising for to the uh, you know from an unnecessary point of view to a less unnecessary point of view. <laughs> like it, it wasn't necessary to begin with, yeah. and and so. You know, so it's, it's and cool we want to have to prevail here. They have to. That's that's my hope. Um, I mean, Apple does this sort of thing all the time, where they they put something into an operating system and it never really ships. You know yeah. that it was it was something they're working on. Um, it's not ready. It's that they 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 actually need to you know add an API or an entitlement or something like that before it will be ready. So that's my hope. Um, but. Um, you know, uh, we will see. I mean, when Sequoia, when you know, fifteen point oh ships, we will. This will be like the first thing to test. You know, <laughs> you, you 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 try your screenshot, you set your clock forward a month a month, um, and you try it again, and that's as simple as that. But um, yeah, developers. I mean, part of it is also developers are up in arms about this because they're in a situation where all of a sudden people are going to be viewing their apps um, more suspiciously. Right. And it's going to cause support burden for them. Sure, sure. For no reason, right? You know, like you know, it, it makes me think. If I was uh, the developer of CleanShot X, I would put out some, something out just saying, "No, this is not ready for Sequoia. <laughs> I'm not going to allow it to run under Sequoia until we <laughs> confirm that this yeah. is fixed." Right? Because that's that's better than having people think it's a bad app. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, because I mean, because it can really hurt your reputation very quickly. 
Um, you know, if, if the you know this this kind of gets out within a community, you would think um, Adobe so, might have a little bit of weight in this fight. Uh, they might uh, that's, know somebody. Uh, <laughs> you do feel like there are some back channels that should be should be implemented at this point. Um, yeah. You know, so um, you know, I, I'm talking to people I know at Apple, but I haven't gotten anything anything back yet from yeah. you know, people in the know. I so it's why, why is Photoshop one of the ones? What do they do that? I don't know. Um, really? Oh wow. I, yeah, I mean, it's just it's I, people. Other people have reported that one, so I'm not sure exactly. Again, it's 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 subtle. A lot of the time, right? Right. So it may just be, oh, this was the best way for us to draw our palettes in a certain way. Like if it floats you know, outside of the wind, like you float a palette outside or something. Right. It could be something as, as silly as that. And and where it was never a problem, so there was no reason not to do it. Um, right. And, and uh, that. Or it's possible that Photoshop, oh, actually someone said that color pickers all need it. Oh. And so but, that might be it, because if you have to basically the be able to... photo, they don't use the Apple standard photo picker then. Right, price right. So in Photoshop, if you use Photoshop, I don't. I don't. Um, can you pick a color from outside the app? I know other apps can do that, like uh, right. Affinity Photo. You can you right. can take your, the, but it's the Apple standard photo picker. That you take the eyedropper right. and you bring it out and you grab something from your desktop background and bring it back in. Right. Um, but, but if, so if, if it's using that, right? So if Photoshop is using their own their own color picker, mm -hmm. and they need to be able to record the screen to see what color of the pixel is under your click, right? Okay, I just looked it up. Why does Photoshop need screen recording permissions? And Adam Angst is right, shockingly. This permission is only required <laughs> yes. if you want to use the eyedropper tool in Photoshop to sample colors from other apps. If you do not grant permission, then you will be limited to sampling colors from within the Photoshop app. But I wonder if that's the uh, if that's the Apple Color Picker. That'd be really weird if it was their. Uh... Well, it, no, it probably is there. It's probably a custom co color picker because again, they'll okay. probably want a, a cross-platform uh, solution. Okay, I'm going to ask so, why does Affinity? I don't know that Affinity. Uh, uh, yeah, Photo I don't know needs it, but let me see what it says. <laughs> uh, permission to record screen window. Yep, it asks the same thing. Huh. So, so that makes me you know, because I don't think they use a uh, non-standard uh, color picker. I'm pretty sure Affinity does. It, it may be one hmm. of those things where it's non-standard somewhere below the hood. You know, like you know, yeah. they, they're calling that they're using the UI, but not actually some aspect of the actual grabbing. Or just being allowed to use the system level one requires screen recording permissions. Right. That might that, be that's, that's anybody possible too. using that. Could be. Could could <laughs> could be. There might be colors involved. They might discover some colors. <laughs> your color your colors could could leak out into public. And those are my uh, colors. <laughs> well, one can only uh, hope that this is uh, like I said, cooler heads have to prevail. This one is just so stupid. I can't I can't imagine that yeah. one sticking around. Yeah, and this and this does feel to me like you know one of those very good uses of like you know. Internet, internet, internet irate, the internet becoming irate, you know, because if no one says anything, then Apple is like, well, clearly this is not a problem. Let's just put it in. <laughs> uh, and, and to be fair, there are certain cases where um, like a regular prompt is not a terrible idea. So, um, you know, the, there's the rules behind on the iPhone, you know, when you're prompted for your passcode. Even if you've got Face ID or Touch ID, you know, you can, you have to put in your passcode once every. It's basically six six and a half days. I think it's a very funny number. Oh really? Um, okay. Um, yeah, basically, um, and and there's all sorts of other you know after you restart, after you do it, blah 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 blah. And the reason why Apple does that has that timer um, is that they really want you to remember your passcode. Like <laughs> right, if right, you right. forget your passcode, bad stuff happens. Yeah. And so. And so that is a case where it makes sense to do that random little nag of, oh, yeah, I'm going to make you type in your password. Same thing of the password on the Mac. Um, right. You know, if you've got Touch ID or your Apple Watch or something, every now and then it's going to ask you for your password because you really can't forget it. You know, you, you, if, you if you go more than, 
more than a few days without ever thinking about it, some people will forget it and that's going to cause them headaches later on. So that's an example of like, oh yes, that was a good idea to reaffirm <laughs> Um, yeah, reaffirm something and nag us into it. Um, it does but this one use no. a little less complex password than I would, though, no, because yeah. I do have to do it often yeah, enough. Totally. Um, yep. I, I know I should go a little worse or harder than I do. I do make it a little bit harder, but I don't make it a lot harder because it's like, oh man, because you know. type it a lot. No, yeah, it's absolutely yeah. the case. Uh, I was also yeah. the other day. I was uh, pleased. When I realize that it doesn't matter how many times you mess up your one password, it just keeps letting you try. And that's such a oh. relief because that one's, you know, 168 <laughs> characters long and it's got a goat in the middle of it. I mean, it's it's a hard <laughs> password, so I don't always get it right. If I, if I haven't logged in in a couple of days, I'm like, you know, got to get the muscle memory working again. And so, yeah. especially on the phone. And so the fact that it doesn't lock you out permanently or for the next 378 years, like if my uh, granddaughter <laughs> messes with my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, new iPhone. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. All right. Well, this yeah, has no. Been, it's been good learning all about this. Uh, I'm enraged. <laughs> Um, you know, I've got bored with political <laughs> enragement, so it's kind of fun to focus on something else. Uh, we have those enraged muscles really flexed right now, so we're good at it. Yeah, right. uh, but yeah. it's fun to read, uh, to direct it somewhere else. Oh, I, I did want to tell you one last thing. It has nothing to do with any of this, but I saw a T-shirt that really made me laugh today. It was black, and on the front it said, Think. So, of course, I looked at what was on the back, expecting to see differently. On the back, it was the IBM logo. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's got to be a big, right? Don't just think differently. Think. Um, I actually, I have to, I, I want to say that there actually is an IBM, like, phrase that about, about, like, with literally think the word IBM? think. Like, from, like, from the 80s. Okay. Like, I think it's, I think it's old. Oh, uh, so maybe think was before think differently. Yeah. I ah. think so. I think that it's possible to think differently. We could ask the internet. Um, <laughs> I, I have to be careful here. Be, um, um, as I, I have, I have, I'm very pleased with myself because I've set up a new, um, yes. Um, yeah, the think slogan stylized by stylized uppercase was introduced by Thomas Watson in 1911. <laughs> Okay, so well, it's, yeah, it's more interesting than I thought. Then, <clears throat> um, so you see, actually, I mean, this is the first time you've yeah, I've had that thought, which is that now think different um, is now even it's actually much more of a dig than anything else. <laughs> I did not I did not put that together. Um, yeah. The uh, so I, I grew up um, near IBM Owego and IBM Endicott, um, two big IBM plants at the time. Neither neither exists anymore. They've been taken over. One, I think, I'm not sure about one, but one is by Lockheed Martin. But so all my high school friends, um, a lot of their parents worked at IBM. And um, and back in the day, the, uh, the the phrase, at least among my my my, my friends whose parents worked there, the phrase was that people who worked at IBM were zipper heads, <laughs> um, because you would go into work and you would you would I forget what you said, I think you would unzip and you would just like you know do your do your work and then you'd zip up and you'd go home. I don't know quite where that came from, but that's oh IBM gosh. IBM. If lore. you look in uh, Wikipedia, think different. The slogan has been widely used as a response to the IBM slogan "Think." <laughs> wow. We're just figuring this out now? Yeah, what are the chances that I saw that shirt and that I would mention it to you? Because it wouldn't have occurred to me to look at it. Also, when I brought it up, did I say, I expected it to say differently? You said differently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, I caught that. <laughs> but you appreciated so, the uh, grammatically correct version, right? I did. I did. I did. <laughs> what I was saying, the reason why I was, I was going to have trouble searching is I've now got, I made myself a keyboard maestro macro. Um, because I use ARC, and mm -hmm. ARC has um, uh, command option N, which is a system-wide, ooh, system-wide, I hope it has permissions for that, a <laughs> system-wide keyboard shortcut to do a search um, that then feeds into ARC. And so the problem is it's a system-wide search, and then you have to type. Well, I was, I was like, oh, what if I turn, and then I, recently I've been like turning on dictation so I can just talk to it. Uh -huh. And I'm like, ooh, if I do a keyboard maestro macro that brings that up, waits half a second, turns on dictation, I can just dictate all my searches. Ooh. Sort, Which, of, like, sort of like you could with Siri, you mean? Oh, but it actually works. 
Oh, I see. I see. And uh, oh, and I'm dictating to. Um, I'm searching in perplexity, where oh, that's you, know, you don't want to do. You like, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not do. So I actually do want to do. You know, um, you know. Tell me about the relationship between the IBM Think logo and Apple's Think Different campaign. So that would be my. You could be, be effusive and get the full answer, right? Right, it, right precisely. And so, uh, because I'm not trying to just do a keyword search in Google, basically, and right, and right. that's much easier. To, Perplexity likes that, and it's much easier to do with with dictation. Yeah. Um, so uh, so yeah. So that's my. I'm currently. I but but it doesn't. But I can't do it on a podcast because I like I'd hit my thing and then I'd have to talk to it. I have no idea what would happen when dictation would kick in and somewhere else. <laughs> like ah, bad things would happen, and you should not have permission to do that, Adam. <laughs> And on that note. <laughs> and on that note, you can find everything Adam writes at tidbits.com, and. Uh, you know what? You talk a lot about Tidbits Talk. You mention that often. Describe what Tidbits Talk is so people can understand how to get involved. Yeah, so Tidbits Talk, it is discourse. It's a web-based uh, discussion forum. And we have it tied into Tidbits. So whenever you leave a comment on a Tidbits uh, article, it's actually in discourse, um, which well, is another, cool. it's another website called talk.tidbits.com. And, um, and so we have... We have three cat only three categories of discussions. There's mm -hmm. article comments, which are comments on the ex articles. There's a very, very, very low one called site feedback, where people complain if something isn't working. Mm -hmm. And then there's the really big one, which is just tidbits talk, and that is any kind of Apple related discussions people want to have. Although I usually draw the line at whining, <laughs> just tired so, of the whining. Even even if this whole article was whining. This article was 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 not whining. It was constructive no, criticism. It was um, yeah, no, because I, because I, in fact I I'm making no, but it's but it's serious. Like I, that's just it. I actually really do. I really don't mind people criticizing Apple at all. Right. But I dislike just the when if I ever hear the phrase when if Steve Jobs were still alive one more time, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So sure. you know, it's just like it's just yeah, right. It's it, it has it has no real relevance, and 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 it's just the oh, you know, Apple's quality has dropped so much over the last ten years. Like, oh, what are you basic? You're not. You're just whining. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. Um, if you want and specific so, like, criticism, that's something. Or spe an, an idea specific criticism. Improved. And right, and a suggestion for for how to fix it. You know, those yeah. are totally legitimate things, and Apple should absolutely be held to, held held to, held accountable for if they do things they do badly. Um, but you gotta have a gotta have a gotta have a suggestion um, yeah. that's that's real world and not just the well, if Steve Jobs were still alive, he wouldn't have allowed this. <laughs> You know, I really like that you just have a couple of categories. I, I tease friends of mine who have, um, in general, like, for some reason, Discord seems to be where people like to have it's like 14 categories. And I get there and I go, I don't know where to post this. I'll just go away. I have very few in, uh, we use Slack for my community, and I have very, very few in there. But like, one of them is called Delete Me. That's where you can just put stuff that doesn't matter. Like, it's not even on topic, but it made you laugh. Maybe it's an XKCD cartoon or something, you know, whatever you want. And one is, no, Silla Castaway show off. So that's where, like, hey, look, I wrote this cool thing, or I took this awesome picture, or, you know, yeah. something you're proud of, a podcast you posted. It's a place for them to show off. And other than that, it's uh, there's a security one, a programming one in general. That's it. Yep. And yeah. you can kind of tell the difference between those. I, I am not a big Reddit person um, mm -hmm. at all. I mean, I, I occasionally stumble on something in Reddit through a Google search um, mm -hmm. or a complexity search at this point. And, but um, it is clear that Reddit is sort of the, the exponential logical conclusion of breaking things down into as many categories as possible. Uh, <laughs> Where you can find like the left-handed wingnut Reddit subreddit. <laughs> Precisely. With the left handed big nut Reddit subreddit. But don't be talking to me about the wrenches for those, because that's a different subreddit. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, on that note, people should go okay. to tidbits.com and read the <laughs> very intelligent and constructive articles by Adam Angst and all of the other lovely authors there at Tidbits, correct? Absolutely. And Tidbits Talk, uh, very high quality discussions where because of there's no whining. I love it. All right. <laughs> we'll talk to you again soon, Adam. All right. Thanks, Allison. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Chit Chat Across the Pond Light. Did you notice there weren't any ads in the show? That's because this show is not ad supported. It's supported by you. If you learned something, or maybe you were just entertained, consider contributing to the Podfeet podcasts. 
You can do that by going over to podfeed.com and look for the big red button that says support the show. When you click that button, you're going to find different ways to contribute. If you'd like to do a one-time donation, you can click the PayPal button. If you want to make a recurring contribution, click the weekly Patreon button. You're only charged when I publish an episode of the NoSillaCast, which, let's face it, it's every single week, so I don't charge Patreon for Chit Chat Across the Pond Light or Programming by Stealth episodes. Another way to contribute is to record a listener contribution. It's a great way to help the NoSillaCast ways learn from you and takes a little bit of the load off of me doing all the work. If you want to contact me for any reason, you can email me at allison at podfeed.com and I really encourage you to follow me on Mastodon at podfeet at chaos.social. Maybe you want to talk to the other Nocilla castaways. You can do that in our Slack group at podfeet.com slash Slack. Thanks for listening, and stay subscribed.